everyone. Um, everyone, my name is Peter. I am the developer of Mozart. And with me, uh, there are, of course, Chatel, uh, creator of the exhibition, Do Not Touch. Um, Marie, if you want to say something, <laughs> this is probably. Yes, for sure. Um, so uh, tonight is our. Uh, first talk around the exhibition, Do Not Touch, uh, which is our second group show of the year held in Decentraland in 2022. Um, in this show, we present the works of uh, Sacha Katz, uh, here with us tonight, Baron Lantaigne, and Martina Menegon, who is also with us tonight. Uh, the show opened on the 9th of April and is now extended until the 3rd of July. Um, so let me tell you a bit more about the show in its, itself. Um, so Do Not Touch uh, moves out of the traditional IRL museum where we are forbidden to touch and looks at the metaverse as a materially removed space where it is safe to discuss the many realities of the palpable. The exhibition is about digital art exploring the tactile and the different emotions it can trigger from sensuality to pain, from joy to anger or fear. Away from examining the self-representative nature of the body, uh, the focus lies on material behaviors. A skin acts as a semi-permeable and sensory feature. It appears as a boundary and also a space for connection, a place for satisfaction or repression, a sensor for which we interact for better or worse. Um, in doing so, the, the show ponders a dialogue between human and post-human conditions, which I'm sure we'll have a chance to discuss tonight. Um, so as I was saying earlier tonight, we're delighted to welcome two artists from the exhibition to discuss the practice and deep dive into the topic of touch. Uh, let me introduce our first speaker, Sasha Katz. Uh, hi. Sasha is Yes, hi Sasha. Um, so Sasha is a Russian-born 3D artist based in Athens. Uh, central to her works uh, is a depiction of female sensuality, asserting body's perfection in being imperfect. Stepping away from the created representation of selves, uh, she portrays figures that look like us, revealing the beauty of human interactions. For uh, this exhibition, she presents an assemble of four pieces that explore tactile connections when in pain or grief. Perhaps I'll... Oh, what's uh, going, guys? Please. Yeah, um, I just want to present our second guest, uh, Martina Menegon. Martina is an amazing Italian artist working with interactive and extended... Um, and extended reality art. Uh, her works create a smash of physical and virtual elements, allowing her to explore the contemporary self, its quote unquote digital corporeality and intimacy. The exhibition shows four pieces of her self presenting these captures, which can also be activated through augmented reality. Welcome, Martina. I'm glad you are here with us. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. So to start of this uh, discussion, maybe a question to you both. Um, what are your thoughts uh, about uh, online intimacy and the way displays and uh, screens can mediate relationships? Do, do you see it as a, as a good thing, a bad thing, maybe something complementary to IRL experiences? And... I mean, another question pending to that is, do you feel like touch is, is a missing piece to you in virtual environments? Um, well, I think... What's it's... the first? <laughs> can you hear me, actually? My internet is also a bit... Yes, jealous. I can hear you, definitely. <laughs> um, well, for me, it it is... Uh, it is uh, I'm not really sure. Like, I, I've been in in so many uh, virtual spaces and you know creating many avatars and so on and i always realize my tendency is to isolate myself in those social virtual spaces um so i i think like in this kind of reality we're living in where 
we are bound somehow to be touched by technology or living with technology. Um, it's a matter of understanding how uh, touch can be translated through screens, through uh, mouse, through uh, touch or clicks um, or swipes and so on. So I, I think those are all touches that we are uh, performing on a daily basis if we are uh, you know, people that can access to internet, can access certain devices. And I think on a long run, this will become part of our, if it's not already part of our intimacy. So to, um, I had to take this off, for example, but like when my watch vibrates because I'm getting a message, I'm being touched by, in a different way by this technology and I feel someone is contacting me. So I think it's, it's a matter of getting used to this new kind of touches that we have online or within the digital realm. Um, they are, of course, different than the touches that we have in the physical reality. Um, but also with that, we need to kind of relearn because after two years of pandemic, touch has become some kind of awkward thing to do. Like now there is all these different hugs and uh, handshakes that we are doing that are a bit more uh, safe than what we used to have. So I think it's just a matter of learning and to allow this learning to happen. Uh, for me, the possibility of uh, online intimacy is, is the greatest gift uh, we have now and the generation of our parents didn't have. And I think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, you can see and hear the person dear to you who are far away and you can invent a special type of communication, like a new language, uh, the sequence of video calls, recorded videos, voice recordings. This is my favorite part can be very poetic. Uh, it's a really special kind of communication where the physical limitations, like being in another country, is bringing a new form of connection and bonding that couldn't exist without any our screens and Wi-Fi, of course. And those vibrating notifications can be very special. Uh, and these limitations uh, through screens, I think, are designed for us to be more creative. And th this inspires me so much. Great. Philip, do you thank want Thank you. Absolutely. No, thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Uh, speaking of which, Sasha, um, in the interview featured in the catalog, you explain how the representation of touch acts as uh, an an empathic tool to support people that are away from you. Um, I wonder whether you can expand on that. Um, why is the tactile so important to your artworks and how did you come to explore physical interactiveness? Uh, thank you, Filippo. Mm, I'm a very tactile person. Uh, I like to be touched and I like to touch other people. Uh, well, when I'm depressed and tired and lonely, I go to Thai massage uh, to get those intense feelings in the process and the relief feelings uh, in the end. And in my works, I'm exploring the relationship between women and I'm the person who confuses uh, love, desire and obsession. So there are all types of love and obsessive touches in my work. And I'm accurately working on all the postures and gestures, like every finger, um, I'm, uh, I'm looking at it very attentively uh, because uh, for me, these touches, they have a special meanings. It's, it's like a code. And I can't imagine the relationship of people who are in one space, in one place without touches. Um, that's interesting, actually. Maybe I, I could hop a question into uh, the schedule here, but um, uh, it seems like, um, I mean, you both bring this idea of like touch as being um, mediated, like um, uh, either like now with COVID, like there's more mediation. So that's how we realize actually we're lacking touch. And uh, Sasha, you're bringing this idea of, uh, of touch as uh, as as being more immediate uh, in physical environments. So um, I, I, I just wonder, like, how, how do you see this relation between IRL and URL? Do, are they complementary to you? And do you feel like we'll bond similarly or, or just like uh, use um, 
online interactions as a first interface to to then meeting IRL and getting this different sense of intimacy? Uh, well, it uh, totally depends on the situation, but I think it's like speaking in two different languages. And you can speak one language with a person just close to you, and you can speak another language with a person far from you. And this is the part that really amaz- ama- amazes me, because yeah, it can be very different. That's a great answer. I don't know if, Martina, you want to add something on, on top of this, but I thought... Yeah, maybe just that I think, like, um, yeah, it's absolutely interesting for me also these differences and uh, um, just to add on what Sasha said at the beginning, like this, um, these limitations that gets, you know, into creativity that makes us more creative in finding new ways. Um, I think this is absolutely necessary for us and absolutely inspiring. Um, so, yeah, I actually, I just wanted to comment. I totally agree with everything that Sasha just said. Great. So, Martina, uh, the next question is for you. Uh, in the catalog in- interview, you posit your art as a political act, uh, combating the denial of corporality uh, in cyberspace. Uh, I wondered if you could expand on that and also explain how it is important, for instance, that your 3D scan selfies in Untouched um, remain untouched, as, as the title uh, in the series suggests. Mm-hmm. Well, so for me, it, it's um, it's not that per se the work in the show um, has this kind of connotation, but like it's a general thing that I try to bring with my practice. I I come from a background of interactive art where I needed the body and the bodies of the audience in order to for my work to be complete or to be activated somehow and. It was very interesting for me whenever, you know, I I would read about the virtual space and technology and how it brings us away from our body. And I always found it very strange because I feel like um, it does not actually, we still need our body to access that technology. We need our hands to, you know, type or click. We need our head. If you want to immerse in virtual reality, we need our body to move in order to experience a virtual reality. We need to perform body movements if we want to see an augmented reality piece and so on. So I feel we do need the body and we we do need to concentrate on our physical body and its relation with the virtual body. So um, these all discussions of uh, being scared of technology because we are losing our physicality, it's for me um, not per se true. Like in my personal experience, of course, other people might have totally different experience with technology, but... For my work, what I'm trying is, on one hand, show how the physical and the virtual body are in a relation. And I'm trying to do this by um, using glitch or using this uncanny and grotesque aesthetic as a way to bring a sort of physical feedback back to your body. So you're watching something that is completely virtual or you're experiencing something completely virtual, but at the same time, you do feel some Mm. sort of... uh, uh, feedback on your physical body and this also brings me uh, to the piece that is in the show and this untouched uh, so the idea is basically the way that I'm doing this those 3d scan selfies of myself it's it's very intimate for me so I can't do it anywhere I have to be in the mood I have to have a space where I'm alone there is no one disturbing or opening doors or neighbors watching from the window like I have to be very much in my zone and in order to connect with my physical body. And then what I'm doing is performing a very quick uh, gesture or movement while very quickly through the scanning. So I don't know what comes out. I don't know what the scan fix as the moment of my body in that situation. Um, And so I need to wait until I bring this to the software to see it as a mesh, to see it as a 3D model. And then I realize what what I fixed as a moment and it's, uh, it's like getting to know myself for the first time there. So every one of these selfies is something. It takes a bit of time to get to know them and to get to see them. Um, and so because it is this quick moment that it's fixed, I didn't want to then bring extra extensions to that. So they are untouched. What you're seeing is as is. What the software decided was me in that moment is what you can experience. But at the same time, because of this glitch, because of this... Um, 
aesthetic, they look very fragile as well. The, the new the kind of materiality that mm. comes out is a very fragile virtual body. And so the idea is that with the augmented reality, you kind of take care of those bodies, you bring them places, you give them space to exist, basically. Um, and so you create a disconnection again between the physical and the virtual bodies. That's very interesting, Martina. Um, I, what you said reminded me of the fact that at the end of the day, most of digital devices, I would say, you know, most technology at the end of the day, but in particular, you know, digital, um, digital devices are designed to be used by, you know, a single person. You know, you can't hold, for example, the headphone, uh, sorry, you can't hold like, I don't know, your, your smartphone, uh, with three other people. I mean, of course, you can try to do it, but of course, at that point, it will become, you know, very evident you are doing some kind of performance mm -hmm. art. And it's the same thing, you know, with the laptop. It's the same thing with, I don't know, with the mouse, I suppose, you know, with your 3D scanner. Um, so to a certain degree, you know, it feels like that, um, you know, especially particular digital devices are somehow designed, you know, to you know, to develop this kind of intimate relationship with the user. So there is this kind of sensual, I would say, um, quality in the way, you know, these devices are designed. So no, that's, that's very interesting. Speaking of which, um, in both of your works, um, self-representation helps you to redeem agency over your Self, whether emotionally or you know or in appreciating your own body so i wonder uh, could you both share your vision of self-representation is the therapeutic effect and how it helps you grow uh, personally as you see only very light questions tonight um sasha do you mind being do you mind answering me yes thank you Filippo. Uh, I consider self-representation and self-interpretation is uh, as a very therapeutical for myself. Uh, all the characters I create are in some measure my self-portraits. Uh, if it's not a special case like with Tatiana and Love is Louder Than Bombs, where all the story was based on a particular person and all the imperfections and the flaws of the characters are my own flaws and the imperfections. Uh, it also works great for me as a technique of exploring something from the distance, uh, completely changing the point of view and perspective, uh, like I'm wearing that cat face for today. Uh, and I'm not sure about the personal growth, uh, but I definitely, this definitely helps me to define my own aesthetic voice, which is more or less constant, but changing in details. So I have to chase it and follow it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sasha. Uh, what do you think, Martina? Yeah, for me, it's, um, it has been a very long process and I think I'm still not done. I think this is probably gonna, you know, last until I'm alive. <laughs> Um, so it goes back a lot. I I uh, I grew up doing synchronized swimming and uh, this kind of sport. You know, the attention to the body and how the body has to look uh, was Im immense. So we had all to look similar. So that means regulating how we would eat and uh, which kind of haircut and all these things. So I experienced a very limited uh, feelings of my physical body. I was never perfect. I was never elastic enough. I, you know, I was never thin enough and, and so on and so forth. And the moment I discover like 3D in general, so I started also just enjoying, you know, uh, modeling myself or, or just creating avatars and realizing, oh, these are me somewhere of some, on some sort of form. Mm -hmm. um, and they are so free. <laughs> and so for me, this was kind of this yeah. obsession that started of really basically my almost 10 years in Second Life were me alone going and buying different hairstyles and shapes and whatnot, and just basically daily changing my look there and having this conversation with this mm -hmm. new body I was discovering. And now with those selfies I'm creating, 
because they are not an avatar and you know building from a platform that already define how the default avatar should be but really starts from my physical body uh, they feel so even more free than whatever second life avatar i've been ever creating they they are fluid they are always uh, surprising me so somehow uh, for me mm-hmm. it, I, I need to keep doing this in order to feel more free from physical boundaries and um still having problem with my physical self uh, but i love that you know we can enhance ourselves now with face filters and whatnot this is a way to also you know um, relate to the virtual and uh, have a dialogue with our new kind of bodies that we can have and uh, yeah i mean that i i also think that's why the passion for all kinds of virtual and digital technology it allows us to be however whenever whatever uh, we feel like and that's why i'm always mm-hmm. very bothered when i see you know places where you can only choose that one standard avatar you can't go out of the shape uh, because it kind of limits what yeah. the virtual can do which is basically let us free of choosing yeah, our definitely shape. Will... Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry <laughs> no oh, sorry oh. please go on no no i, I was done <laughs> okay <laughs> no, I definitely know what you mean, and it's quite interesting because you know I myself have been using as you know as avatar on my. I mean, of course, it's not the same thing, but you know what I'm talking about, and I'm sure you, you know, you know many other people that do the same. I mean, I've been using the same picture on my social media that I took like in 2015, and you know, I, I feel like I must, you know, somehow live to that sort of standard, I suppose. Uh, no, you, Martina, you mentioned that, you know, this is an ongoing research that will likely take many years of your life. Um, so do you feel uh, you have, do you feel you must follow, you know, technological development, uh, you know, in this research, or you are probably going to stick to just one setup or, you know, one specific uh, device, which can be, for example, you know, the 3D scanner you, you used for the Untouched series? Um I usually uh, can't just stick with one thing, so I'm I'm very hectic with choosing what I need. I also like in terms of like when I install my work, I really appreciate uh, having a bit more setup day, so I can experience the space and I can maybe do a setup that, that is a bit more site specific. Um, I don't per se want to get obsessed with like having the latest technology. This is not what I'm really really interested about, but it's more. Um, have a look at what kind of tools are out there and how can I experiment with them as long as I can access them, like budget-wise and and so on. Um, so there are many things I would love to try that I will probably not be able to try at this current time of my life. Um, but even with the 3D scanner, I started with a Kinect camera. It was a very cheap secondhand bot. Um, and then I could afford a, an, a phone that has a 3D scanner on and then I had to kind of readapt my uh, way of working uh, for this new technology. And I really love that. It, it's kind of this moment of not knowing what's going to happen. Again, what Sasha was saying, these limitations that might get very creative and very inspiring. So uh, I think I just would like to keep, you know, trying out and look what's there. And in the end, it's like it's a tool. The aesthetic will be that one because that's what I love to do. Uh, but I guess the whole process mm-hmm. of arriving to the final result might change. Great. Well, um, <laughs> so uh, as a final question, uh, could you point, I, point out maybe one thing that you think might or should evolve in how we relate to touch? Uh, it could be anything online or offline. Sasha, would you like to to start with this question? Yes, I will start. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, sex toys applications for the people who are far from each other geographically, for example, have a great potential uh, in the future in the context, not just uh, sexual pleasure, but the wide variety of touches of different body parts. Uh, for example, I would be really happy if my dear grandmother, who lives in another, in another country, and she's not prepared to for air traveling, 
uh, could pat me on the head so because I miss her so much and I need this. So I'm thinking in that direction. Yeah, interesting. Really so amazing. also just feelings of hugs or like... Yes. Um, what about you, Martina? Yeah, I think it's in a similar direction. Like I, um, I kind of long for a way that can transpose or translate uh, touches that are happening in the virtual spaces somehow in my physical body. So I, I'm all for like, you know, wearing sensors and, and so on. So I, I, I would love to be able to feel someone else touch from far uh, or uh, also, I mean, with our lives, it's very likely we are traveling a lot. So it's very likely we are not often mm. at home or often close to the ones that we want to be close to. Um, so I think like any kind of sensors that would allow us to be to feel closer uh, in mm. our distance uh, would be amazing. I, I, I know that there were some research. Maybe there are already. I just don't know. But yeah. Um, I've heard a bit about that and there are some research and especially on like um, hugging, but there's also this uh, notion I think is quite interesting that um, like um, that you can send the attention and maybe the attention is more important than mm -hmm. uh, actually receiving the, the pure sensation that you would feel or mimicate, uh, mimicking the situation you would have in a real uh, setting, but just like feeling the intention of like someone wanting to hug you or uh, to pet you. Um, and then I mean, can extend also to, to sex toys in that sense, but which is more like, then we're more dealing with like in the sense uh, controlling that kind of stuff and similar to real life. But um, but yes, it's super interesting, I think, to see that the stimuli might be more important than the actual uh, feeling in the end. I don't know if you have thoughts on this. Um, no. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, you know, when you hear like the notification sounds and so on, like you, you already, you have like this moment of excitement. Oh, someone brought me and like maybe then it's just like someone whatever um, a notification from an app you forgot to switch off or something so there is this moment of like feeling heard or like feeling thought of um, which is always very nice but at the same time I think uh, on a long run if we keep you know living with technology the way that we have been in the last couple of years um, it would be amazing to find some solutions in which the touch is also translated mm -hmm. out of the screens like best case scenario, like some sort of like wireless, very portable, like Morton Heilig sensorama of, of the 20th or <laughs> something like where you also have smell, you know, like it's not only the vibrations and what you see, but also like smells like to really bring you to some physical experience that you are mm. not in at that moment. Oh, thank you. Okay. No, I, I, heard about, I heard about the huggy uh, pajama, <laughs> which is basically, you know, something that like members of a family living, you know, around the world um, can, you know, can wear, you know, to feel the touch, you know, their sons, their daughters, their you know, <laughs> mom and dad or the dads and moms. So, I mean, yeah, this is something that is certainly, you know, this is something that I suppose is going to be developed uh, very soon, um, I suppose. Um, now, Martina, Sasha, thank you for joining us today. Um, of course, it was lovely. <laughs> thank you. It was lovely to hear about your research and the way you approach uh, representing touch. Uh, before leaving you, I would like to remind everyone listening that the exhibition is on view in the central end until Sunday the 3rd of July. Okay, you have no excuse, you have no excuses. You just go to see this amazing exhibition. You still have <laughs> three weeks, okay? Three weeks? Two weeks, sorry, yeah, two weeks. Two, <laughs> um, two weeks. Um, you can learn more about Do Not Touch by ordering physical copy of the catalog, uh, which includes two introductions by Marie and I, along with special artist interviews. 
uh, of course, you are very welcome to find the link on Mokta's website and our social media profiles. Uh, we also hope to see you next week. Uh, we'll do a, a talk with uh, Baron Lantaigne, the third artist of the show. Uh, so Monday, the 27th of June, um, same place and time. So uh, it's 7 p.m. CET, uh, which translates to whatever in your time zone, but we'll be super clear on our socials for like uh, uh, whether you're in the U.S. or uh, somewhere in Asia. And um, other than that, uh, oh, yes. And so with Baron Montaigne, we'll be discussing more like um, haptic technologies uh, and relation to devices. Um, so, yeah, thank you for uh, joining and see you next week. It was lovely uh, to have you, Martina and Sasha, with us tonight for this discussion on touch and intimacy. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay. If you are still around, this is the after party. <laughs> <laughs>